You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. is Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom with your host, Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield. Dr. Janet explores the meanings of our challenging and ecstatic life experiences, clarifies the meanings of words we use, opens up our minds to more freedom and choice, and offers insights into our everyday lives. Please welcome the host of Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom, Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield. Welcome to BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The show is Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom, and I am your host, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield. Well, we have just had so much to talk about, and today I chose to speak to you directly about some topics with which I've struggled and topics that I promised to talk to you about and then we simply didn't have time on the one-hour show. But these topics are, first of all, rage and anger. What do we do with these emotions when they infect our lives and how do we transform them into useful energy. So that would be one focus. And then the second focus will be how to use our words effectively and efficiently and creatively and with excellence to co-create the kind of world in which we want to live, all of us, together. We are all the creators and we are all the beneficiaries of a peaceful, powerful, prosperous planet. So let's start with this challenge of anger and rage. And as many of you who've listened to this show before, there are certain forms of language I really prefer. One is simply storytelling. So I'll be using a lot of stories this morning. The reason for the storytelling is that it is non-authoritarian. You will get whatever meaning you get out of the stories I tell. Hopefully, they will connect at some point with parts of your own life with which you have struggled and where perhaps you have been able to overcome. So let's start with this challenge of anger. In 2011, a good friend of mine, Frederick Zappone, started a big discussion on his Inspired Living blog talk radio show because his topic was, got anger? Find out how to make anger your most powerful ally and your best friend. Well, you cannot imagine the resistance this topic brought up from people still stuck in their heads about anger, so very certain that anger was somehow a bad. So I can only assume that those people who were resisting this idea of anger is okay, and let's accept it and then transform it, have lived very comfortable lives. Have they ever been jailed for a crime they didn't commit? 
raped, tortured, had their homes ransacked and gifts from their loved ones stolen, been evicted because their landlord could get more money from someone else, lived in a society where disputes are resolved by bribes, been forced to exist in a concentration camp, been relegated to the back of a bus or forced to drink from a different water fountain because of their skin color, been an innocent victim of a nuclear bomb. If they have not experienced any of these things, they simply can't understand anger and outrage. So the issue is not whether there is anger and outrage. There is. The issue is what we do with it when we experience it. Do we stuff it and pretend that the evil, abusive conduct never happened? Do we remain silent, tacitly supporting this kind of inhuman conduct and allowing it to continue? Well, I, for one, after I worked my way through my terror, chose to speak out against the, the, the wrong abuse of conduct. Bring it to the light of day and make it transparent for the whole world to see. And then take action to transform it. It is not acceptable conduct in a co-creative, collaborative world. So feeling anger and taking appropriate action is not the antithesis of love and understanding. It, in certain contexts, is love and understanding at the very deepest level of our souls. So I can still love the person who engages in this kind of despicable conduct and understand that he too may have been abused. However, I do not need to remain silent in the face of his dysfunctional conduct. And I get really tired of New Age gurus preaching that I shouldn't be angry. The fact is, sometimes I am angry. I am angry when people I trust betray me. I am angry when people make promises they don't keep. And I am angry when people treat me with disrespect. Anger was not considered a nice emotion in my birth family. My mother rarely expressed it. Neither did my father. There were some exceptions. When I was three years old, my mother and I were standing on the sidewalk along Roosevelt Belt Boulevard, which is a multi-lane highway in northeast Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Suddenly, I jerked my hand away from my mother's grip and darted out onto the highway. My mother was terrified and furious. Her only daughter, in whom she had invested so much time, energy, care, and love, was stupidly going to kill herself. Had I killed myself, I would simultaneously have killed much of the meaning in my mother's life. She ran after me, dragged me back to the sidewalk, and vehemently spanked me. I deserved that spanking. It quickly taught me not to run in front of cars. And when we come back to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom, I will share some more 
stories from my own life experience. I'm Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield. You're listening on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. I'm your hostess, Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield. You're listening on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So one of our focuses today is just talking about this very challenging emotion, rage. And I know on other shows I've mentioned this um, The power under dynamic where you're going along, living your own life in a very comfortable, easy, supportive way. And all of a sudden, either an event or another person comes in and smashes you down. And you are shocked. First of all, you know, Why me? Why do good things happen or why do bad things happen to good people? Why did this happen to me? What did I do wrong? What should I have done differently so that this did not happen? And ultimately, you get to a point where you accept the fact that, yes, it did happen. And then sometimes there's a transformation of the pain and the shock. It's, this is all energy we're working with. So there are different forms of energy. There's a transformation of the pain or the shock into anger and rage, particularly if you were abused by another human being. In some of the ways I mentioned in the first segment of the show, you were bombed or you were relegated to an inferior position somehow, or you were raped, uh, or, or y- your child was shot for no good reason. The, that rage lots of times then transforms into a power against dynamic, a power against the abuser, the person who has abused you. And where we really want to go with this, need to go with this, as a human society, is into a power with position, which means you need to get your own power right first, and you need to transform your own rage into something constructive. And then you can attract other people into a power with dynamic so that together 
we are working to co-create a peaceful, powerful, prosperous planet. And it really isn't that hard once we work through our own issues and start talking to other people. So uh, back to the stories. Another story from my own childhood. (laughs) I think I've been a rebel ever since I was born, but you wouldn't have known it to look at me because I was a model student and a model daughter. So I didn't look like a rebel, but there were times that I found myself to be rebellious. And it's when I went into this rage. As a ninth grade student, I was editor of the school newspaper. I wrote an editorial upholding freedom of speech. The newspaper advisor didn't like it. (laughs) She rewrote my article, toned it down, appended my name and told me why what I had written was wrong. And as a model student, I rarely confronted a teacher But this time, I was outraged in ways that even surprised me. I remember being shocked again, in tears again. I stormed out of the classroom and just saying, you wrote it. You sign your name to it. And then I went and cried for half an hour. (laughs) You know, how old was I here? 11 or 12 years old. So anger can be a wonderful messenger. For myself, I think it's really important that I listen to it with respect and decipher the message it is bringing to me. While the message might be partly about what someone else is doing or not doing, The real message is for me. How am I going to respond so that the situation does not happen again? And if I ignore the message, telling myself I shouldn't be angry, I am out of integrity and enabling injustice, disrespect, and lack of accountability. And I'll begin another story. This is another uh, same dynamic, power under power against, and then power with. Uh, all, in fact, all these stories kind of center around that theme and how I can, how we all can shift our perspectives and shift our words to bring ourselves into harmony first. And once we are in harmony, then we can bring harmony to everybody and everything around us. So we'll begin now and then we'll continue on to the next segment of the show. After 21 years of marriage and three children, my husband abandoned me for another woman. I had been a wonderful wife. I had washed the family clothes, cleaned the family home, baked homemade bread, cared for our yard and organic garden, joined my husband on his sailing excursions and trips to Maine, watched football games with him, entertained his friends, played bridge with him, sung our children to sleep, read them stories, played games with them. He said we had the perfect marriage. Yet he abandoned me and our children to rut after another woman. My whole world turned upside down. What had I done wrong? I lo- I, yeah, I lost my trust in people. I lost my trust in the social systems that had supported my family over centuries. I was hurting. My children were hurting. There was little I could do to make anything better. And you're listening to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. We, I'll continue with the story when we come back. I'm your hostess, Dr. Janet Smith-Gorefield. 
You're listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com. Or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Welcome back to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. I'm your hostess, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So before the break, I was telling you a little bit about the absolutely horrible and shocking experience I had when my husband of 21 years abandoned me and our children so he could have an affair with another woman. And I had said, I just said, I lost all my trust in people, in our social systems. I was hurting, our children were hurting, and I was powerless at the time. There was nothing I could do to change this. I sobbed alone at night for hours. My heart shattered wide open and split into millions of pieces. One of our sons went from straight A's to straight F's in a single year, got hooked on drugs, and became involved in physical violence and arrests. I was waking up in the middle of the night with such deep rage that it felt as if my guts were being ripped from my belly. Except for emotional support from my parents, I might well have bought a gun and murdered both my husband and his mistress. That's how strong the anger was. Why didn't I do it? I think two reasons. I didn't want to spend the rest of my own life in jail. And um, the other reason was I didn't want my children to be orphans. So there was self-love and love for my children within all that rage toward the man who had made vows to me to love, honor, and obey. So how can one be grateful for such a life-shattering experience? Well, what did I learn about myself? I learned I was a survivor, and I was a spiritual warrior, being used by this man as a convenient housekeeper, babysitter, and sex object was not the life I was intended to live. 
At age 20, becoming a lawyer had never been part of my vision. At age 40, I needed to go to law school to learn how to use words and the patriarchal system to protect myself against words and the patriarchal system. I graduated cum laude and practiced law for 22 years in Atlantic City, New Jersey, around the time that Donald Trump was building his first casino there. On more than one occasion, bullies, incompetence, and dysfunctional politicians disintegrated and disappeared as I presented relevant facts and arguments to support a dynamic, all-inclusive, co-creative community. I learned how to think for myself and take care of myself. I became a free woman. I am beholden to no one other than the source I have chosen to believe in, myself, and those humans who are accountable and conscious enough to deserve my gifts and my love. I've experienced many dark nights of the soul, but I've learned to dance with the words and dance with the wisdom. And I've even learned to dance with functional, respective, appreciative men. There was a, here's another story. This was a story, and I have several from when I was practicing law, where I was, as a, as a woman entering the law practice in the 1980s when there weren't a lot of women in the law practice. They were just starting to enter the law practice. I think I was a token female in the law firm which first hired me to make them look good as if they hired females. Uh, it didn't have anything to do, well, it did have to do with my ability. I had graduated from law school cum laude. But I was still, I was an outsider within that law firm. The guys would all go out to lunch together and I would sit and eat my lunch at home alone. And, uh, you know, the the guys that I could even talk with kind of held me at a distance because if they became too friendly with me, they would be looked down on by the other guys. So here's a story from my law practice. And again, I don't know whether we'll have all the time to get through that. But I worked for a client whose home was damaged by fire. Her mortgage company lost the insurance proceeds check. She called, left messages, and sat in limbo, her calls unanswered. When she did get through, the company transferred her from one employee to another with no resolution of the problem. They were wasting my client's time, energy, and money. My client could not repair her home without the insurance money. She was paying rent elsewhere. After a year of trying to resolve the problem, she wrongly but understandably stopped making mortgage payments. Well, the mortgage company, this was they figured this was just money in their pocket. They immediately began foreclosure. My client was never served with a summons and complaint. By the time she came for legal help, her home was scheduled for a sheriff's sale. She had done nothing wrong. How, however, because she had never been served with a summons and complaint, She didn't even know about the sheriff's sale. She was aghast. And we'll finish the story when we come back to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. I'm your hostess, Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield. 
You are listening on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at L'École des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. We're back on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom, and some stories about rage and transformation of rage. I'm your hostess, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield, on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Before the break, I was telling you this one of the stories from my law practice. When a woman whose home was being foreclosed by a mortgage company through no fault of her own, finally came to a lawyer for help. She came to me. By the time she came, her home was scheduled for sheriff's sale. And she wasn't even served with a summons and complaint, which is legally required in this country, if you are abiding by the rules of law that are established here in the United States. So she was shocked, totally shocked that she was about to lose her home. So I called the attorney for the mortgage company, requested his cooperation in postponing the sheriff's sale, asked him to provide me with documentation so we could get the insurance check reissued, the property repaired, and the mortgage paid. Although he promised, that's one of the things I really get upset about is when people make promises and they don't keep them. Although he promised to speak with the mortgage company, He did not postpone the sheriff's sale, didn't provide the requested documentation, didn't answer my follow-up letters, and refused to accept my phone calls. Well, again, I was furious. This was not my client's fault. This was not my fault. We were trying to work together to save the property. And my guess is the focus of the mortgage company was to put money in their own pockets, however they had to do it. In New Jersey, where I was practicing, an owner of property being foreclosed is allowed two automatic postponements of a sheriff's sale. I requested one to the court. Now now I was no longer talking to the attorney for the mortgage company because He clearly wasn't talking to me. So I requested one and immediately filed a motion to vacate final judgment. I enjoyed letting my outrage show. My courtesy 
to this corrupt mortgage company and its attorney had accomplished nothing. Interestingly, my anger got the opposing attorney's attention. And I have seen this happen so many times when I've been uh, in a power against situation where I want to be in a power together situation, but the other side doesn't want to be there. So my anger got the opposing attorney's attention. So at 5 p.m. on the day before the court hearing, he called to tell me his client had consented to vacate the judgment, would provide the requested documentation, and would cooperate in getting the property repaired so that my client could move back in. Really interesting. So when you stand up to bullies and you present the facts and you use the law to make the appropriate legal decision, then you are transforming the rage into personal power, but also power with. It's power with someone who has been abused. It's power with a healthy legal system and its internal power with oneself. I could have chosen to stuff my outrage over the treatment my client and I received. I could have chosen to radiate a hot, bright light outward, which is what some gurus recommend toward the mortgage company and its attorney. But I don't think those actions would have stopped the sheriff's sale, saved my client's home, and transformed the attitudes of the mortgage company and its attorney from don't bother me to, of course, we'll work with you. And then here's a final story. I have many, many stories about my own rage, particularly as a female attorney in Atlantic City. This one is another transformation of rage, and I've uh, I've called it from rage to compassion. And this is really understanding, beginning to understand what the abuser has been through and why they've become an abuser. In 2005, I purchased a beautiful piece of land in the western mountains of Panama. I intended to build my dream home there. The developer insisted I use their builder for construction. Well, this immediately raised a red flag because I did have some experience in real estate at that time. I asked friends knowledgeable in construction to evaluate the builder's work. They said the block work was good and the builders were using enough steel reaper. I decided to proceed and had architectural plans drawn up to my own specifications. At first, things seemed to go okay. Although there wasn't much on-site supervision, the builder did agree to correct a master bathroom that was too small for the tub I had purchased, and uh, they were starting to build the bathroom according to their own model rather than my revised model, Uh, correct the slope of the septic system outflow line (laughs) so it would actually serve the purpose for which it was there, and make other minor changes. <laughs> I, 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 another thing, the, 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 not only was there not construction on site, but the employees, the, the people who were doing the actual building, a few years before had been taxi drivers and farmhands. So 
the people building my home had no experience and no supervision. They were hand mixing concrete for the foundations when we had it tested. We discovered it wasn't strong enough to hold up the building. I was picking my battles on this, but there were some things that were simply not acceptable. And I will have to finish the story when we come back. I'm Dr. Janet Smith Warfield on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. You're listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Baby boomers face many challenges, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top. Sharon Ball, nurse practitioner and Christian life and wellness coach, can help. Sharon has written a book called Reinventing Yourself Today, and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life. Whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals, a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds, or a full kick-butt life reinvention, Sharon can work with you. Follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others. Sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients. Other self-help books inspired her, but few gave her the steps to improve her life, so she created a plan that works. Stress no more. Let Sharon Ball open the door. Sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. You're listening to Dancing with Words, Dancing with with Wisdom on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I am your hostess, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield, sharing some of my own struggles with anger and rage. I was telling you before the break about my experience trying to build a my dream home in the western mountains of Panama near Boquete. What I didn't realize when I signed the original contract was that contracts in Panama frequently don't mean anything. If you're an American, you're going to lose in court, so you don't go into court to enforce them. And even though I thought we had an agreement, that soon went totally out the window. My, um, I'd hired first a Panamanian inspector and for a couple of months, And then I hired a U.S. inspector who was a guy with not much education, but he did have about 35 years experience building houses in the United States. So he knew what needed to be done. And of course, the other thing I didn't realize when I went down there was that the neither the developers nor the builders nor the employees who were actually doing the construction had much training or experience or education in how to build a house. So they were in a lot of rage toward me and my inspector who were coming in and suggesting that perhaps it would be a good idea to have the water pipes work so they didn't leak. Perhaps it would be a good idea to uh, change the ceiling a little bit in the bedroom so that you could see out the window and the ceiling didn't cut off the top of the the window. Uh, fix the septic tank so that it actually was useful. When um, my inspector suggested 
to the Panamanian plumber how he might correct some issues in the plumbing system. The Panamanian plumber threw his tools across the yard. Um, (laughs) And the construction company owner could only say that I was the worst client she had ever had and that none of her employees wanted to work for me. Uh, We repeated a water pressure test dozens of times because the gauge dropped 40 PSI on each test. The builder said the drop resulted from the temperature and atmospheric pressure changes. My inspector said there was a leak. Finally, the roof got on, the ceilings were being installed, and this is what I was (laughs) talking about before. The installers were asking technical questions I couldn't answer. There was no on-site foreman, so I brought in my own inspector. So together we brainstormed how to deal with the bedroom ceiling that was too low to clear the window, as well as the slopes of other ceilings. I, I thought everyone was satisfied. Then suddenly... Out of the blue, in September 2008, I received an email from the builder's husband accusing me of breaching the contract and telling me that the builder would not do any more work on my home. Moreover, if I wanted to finish it with another builder, I would have to pay the first builder over $40,000, which certainly was not due. In other words, they were fed up with me and I... I was pretty <laughs> frustrated with the construction I was receiving. Again, I was stunned that they would demand money for me, from me for walking off the job. At first, I apologized, explaining it was not my intention to upset them. It wasn't, but none of my apologies made any difference. And ever since that, My beautiful dream home began to rot. And I flipped between trying to understand, looking for solutions, and feeling outraged. My rage was making me ill and contaminating every cell of my body and every aspect of my life. I knew I had to make an energetic and perception shift, not because the builders necessarily deserved it, but in order to retain my own sanity. I stopped thinking about my beautiful dream home. It had been heaved into the mud and trampled on. To see it in that condition and know there was nothing I could do was gut-wrenching. It was exactly the way I felt when I walked out of my first marriage. It had been heaved into the mud and trampled on, and there was nothing I could do to save it. I made a conscious choice to leave Panama, return to the States, and focus on my life purpose of helping to shift the consciousness of every person on this planet so that together we can live in peace, power, and prosperity. Can I feel compassion for the builders? Yes, I can. How must they have felt to be doing the best they knew how, the best they were trained to do, and be dealing with a client from another country who had different training and perhaps different intentions and different standards of excellence. At this point, I am, having observed this dynamic many times, I think it is true, this is my understanding at least, that anyone so full of anger and blame must be steeped in low self-esteem, and it was not a place I wanted to to stay, breathe. (laughs) Do I want to live in that community? Not on your life. Do I want to sell the house, salvage what I can, and move on with my life? Absolutely. And I I ultimately did that. 
I'm Dr. Janet Smith Warfield. You're listening to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Welcome back to Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your hostess, Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield. So now that maybe I've worked through the rage to an understanding of the other person's position and can actually feel compassion for them without condoning their wrong conduct let's switch for the final segment of the show we may not get through all this but we can start to the other topic that I promised you I would bring you how can we use our words skillfully and powerfully to co-create the kind of world in which we want to live. And just this is just an aside. If any of you are familiar with the Buddhist Eightfold Path, one of the paths is right speech. So what if we ask ourselves, first of all, what kind of world do we want to live in? And this, again, if you look at the Buddhist Eightfold Path, This goes to the issue of intention. So it's setting our intention to co-create the kind of world in which we do want to live, where we would feel comfortable and safe. So what would that look like? Uh, Here are just some suggestions. Enough food, water, and shelter for all. A safe world where we're not shooting each other with guns all the time or verbally abusing one another. An interesting world, a, an exploratory world, a dynamic world, a mutually respectful world, respectful of all life, perhaps a challenging world sometimes, and certainly a creative world and co-creative world. At least these are my ideas, and maybe you have some other ideas. So what are some human-created practices that support, first of all, knowing yourself? Because until you know yourself, you can't know others, and you can't really co-create with others. So these are our practices that support 
getting to know yourself and working through your own shadow work and your own rage and your own terror and your own guilt and, and issues like that. Um, affirmations, positive supportive speech that builds self-esteem, such as, I am beautiful, I am intelligent. You write these down and you say them over and over and over again. Prayer or meditation, sinking into a deep, grounded connection with a power greater than ourselves, whatever that means to you. It's something you experience. It's not something you conceptualize. Watching one's own thoughts. And and again, going to Buddhism, this is the witness. You watch your own mind. Watch where your thoughts are taking you and then how those thoughts affect your emotions and your body. Vision boards. Um, I think I've talked a little bit about these before and I don't have time to go into them, but you can Google them. Gratitude. It helps us focus on the good in our lives and not just the problems and challenges. Even in a challenging situation, what do I what do I have to be grateful for? Uh, and real fast appreciation, journaling, mastermind groups, asking the right questions, speaking in first person singular language, meaningful storytelling, and poetry and circle work. I'm Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield. This has been Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on BBM Global Network. And next week, my guest will be Delia Skye, who is an, an initiator, a trailblazer, and a warrior woman in the current cycle of women's empowerment. Uh, she has worked most recently with breaking the pattern of calendar time. And uh, this is uh, this is the end of Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on BBM Global Network and Tune in Radio. See you next week with Delia Sky. This has been Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom with your host, Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield. Listen each week as Dr. Janet uses words in atypical ways to shift you into experiences beyond words and transforming turmoil into inner peace. Here on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.